Hey guys, in this video I want to talk about how to create simulated signal data and use that simulated data to create time frequency plots. So we're going to be creating stuff that kind of looks like this. So this is I'm going to be um, talking about simulated data in the context of EEG data, which is a type of signal, but it could theoretically be any type of signal. So if you want to use this code for non-EEG signal data, the theory of it would work, although we do use a program in MATLAB called EEG Lab, so it is in the context of um, EEG data. But these time frequency plots can be produced in MATLAB or Python or probably other languages as well. Uh, and it doesn't have to be in the context of EEG data necessarily. So here are some time frequency plots and we're going to be basically producing results that look similar to this. So if this is what you're interested in, you can keep watching the video. EEG Lab really simply can plot both fast Fourier transform time frequency plots or wavelet analysis or like wavelet analysis time frequency plots. So these are wavelets at different cycles and then this is a fast Fourier transform. So that's one a script that I have and I simulated a an amplitude increase around I guess 40 Hertz for about 500 milliseconds so that's what you're seeing here and um, this is a sample uh, wave that I created that has noise and then this is the raw signal without noise and so I have the code here and I'll put this is kind of like very messy because I didn't really plan out this video ahead of time um, but I'll try to clean up the code and I will eventually put it in the description box below I might not get to it uh, right away. And also this code is based on mostly this code, although this code has some errors, so I definitely did make some changes to it, but it hasn't been updated also since 2013, so I'm not complaining that it has some errors in it. And also I got some inspiration from this as well, so this is uh, Python code. Um, so you can do some things, maybe you even prefer this code to the code that I'm going to use, so I'll put a link to this uh, I'll link to this in the description box below so you guys can use whatever code you want. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and get started. I want to go over this and also the script. The first thing you do in this code is you create a complex signal without noise. So you can kind of customize this part of it to your analysis, like what you want to simulate specifically. Um, and I got this code from here without changing too much. So this person created a signal or an event that was 1.2 seconds long. They sampled um, a thousand points per second and they created a complex wave that was made up of 30, 40, 100, and 200 hertz. So these four different frequencies, then you convert the frequencies to radians and then you assign uh, four phases to your four frequencies and these are going to later on be so these numbers are going to be multiplied by 2 pi and then also we randomly assigned four amplitudes to the four uh, frequencies okay so that's basically what this code is doing and you create a signal with that so I'm going to kind of just skip over the whole details of that, but that's kind of like the main idea. And that will give you the plot. I think I exited out of it, but that will give you the complex. Actually, that will give you a static signal. So that's just creating a static complex wave that's made up of four frequencies at different phases and different amplitudes. Now, the second part, this line here, is what creates kind of like a signal change. So this says for the second amplitude, so you have a, a matrix or an array of amplitudes for the second amplitude, uh, change the amplitude which was originally 0.5 to 2. So you increase the amplitude and that has a when you um, plot the time frequency plots, we're plotting um, based on power. So there's a squared relationship uh, between amplitude and power. So by increasing the amplitude, this will increase the power. And then you create basically a second uh, my sig, so my sig two. And then you say for my original static signal from 1100 milliseconds to 1600 milliseconds change my sig to my sig 2. So what this line does is it basically increases the amplitude just for those 500 milliseconds 
from the static signal and amplitude to the increased amplitude. So this is going to create in your time frequency plot a power cluster. So that's what you're going to see is being simulated as like a dark red spot and this is going to refer, because it says 2, it refers to the second amplitude and it's also going to increase specifically the cluster at 40 hertz because that's the second frequency in the array. Okay, and then I plotted this here and this part creates a baseline. So my baseline is 600 milliseconds. Any negative time is basically considered, when you put that into new time frequency, the new time f uh, function, any negative time is going to be considered the baseline automatically. So by having a negative 0.6, I'm saying to take the baseline as the first 600 milliseconds. And then I plotted this. So this plots the, this one actually was what was output um, as the plot with the kind of like static signal and then the 500 milliseconds with increased amplitude. Okay, so where this code is kind of like wrong, or maybe not wrong, but I wouldn't simulate data this way, is um, if you're simulating EEG data, the recordings is like a raw signal and noise. So she plots these time frequency plots without adding any noise to the signal, and so the time frequency plots look basically incorrect. And she also, her baseline also doesn't look good, so I moved the baseline or I moved the event or the cluster kind of farther away from the baseline because you shouldn't have it overlap like this either. But anyway, uh, going back to this, so what I did was I added a noisy part of the signal. And so to do that, I basically created random noise. So I set a seed first, that's just what the first line does. And then I created an array of random points selected from the standard normal distribution, the 0, 1 uh, standard normal, and I picked 1995 because that's going to be the duration of my signal, so it's basically D times S, and that depends on how you want to simulate the data. So I have basically 1,995 random points. And then how you want to plot the data kind of depends. So I guess I can show you two ways. So this code, it picked the four frequencies kind of randomly, but if you, so if you wanted to test it using the four frequencies plus the noise, you would do my data equals my sig plus noise. Um, the way this data simulated a cluster was that they considered everything just random noise. So they considered kind of like the background neural activity as just noise. And then they only included a signal for the cluster that they wanted to plot. So that's why I have both here. And I told you my code was a little messy. So if you wanted just to plot my signal as noise, you would do my sig equals noise and then just create a cluster with a real signal. So that's one, that was basically me trying to copy this code. Um, and I can show you uh, what that looks like, but if you wanted to actually plot the four frequencies, then you would do my sig plus noise. So let me plot both and then I can show you. So then the last part of the code actually plots the time uh, frequency plots. So I use that using the new time f function in EEG lab. So you call EEG lab first. And um, this has a certain number of parameters. Some are optional and some are required. So I have what they are here. So this is data is equal to my data. Number of frames is equal to s times d. Uh, this is the epoch, the epic limit. Um, this is the sampling rate and cycles I have here. And I'm choosing not to uh, plot the intertrial coherence. So I have a loop from i equals 0 to 4. So for EEG lab, the number of cycles is asking for the number of cycles you want if you want to do wavelet analysis. So if you do 0, that gives you a fast Fourier transform instead of a wavelet. And then if you do 1 through 4, that's the number of cycles you want to do in a more lay wavelet convolution. So you can do a loop and cycle through all uh, five to see the difference. So let me show you, let me run this script using the four frequencies and then increasing the amplitude of the second frequency and show you what it looks like. So let me just clear my workspace and then the raw signal, the noisy signal, and the five figures will pop up. Okay, so let me kind of work my way backwards. 
So this is basically kind of considering this a background neural activity. So this is the complex wave. And then, so you see the baseline is from negative 600 milliseconds to zero. And then for 500 milliseconds, we increase the amplitude of the second frequency to two. Then in this plot, we add random noise. So it's the same signal just with noise at every sampling point. And then when we take time frequency plots of this, we get these results. So this is the fast Fourier transform. And as you can see here, we do see a simulated basically increase in power. So if it's um, in decibels, this has been log transformed. And so we do see it at the 40 hertz frequency, like I said. And so that's what it looks like. And then if you do wavelets at different number of cycles, um, you get these results. Now let me show you the same plot if you run it like the Python code and you just consider the background neural activity as just noise. Okay, sorry, I don't know how the heck I'm going to edit this video, but I had to pause the video because um, I think some of the code that I had for doing it another way was wrong and then I had to go back in and edit it. So what I had here was like two different ways of modeling the background noise. So like I said, I think in the first part of the video, um, this person, their code is just a complex wave at four uh, frequencies so that if you're modeling like neural activity, it might not be the most accurate thing. And then the other way I was trying to model it was based on this code. So this code, um, I'm not going to to find the line exactly, but um, when I was reading it, it basically just considers the background neural activity as just noise. So it just models the background activity as standard normal noise, and then when it wants to create a cluster, a simulated cluster, then it adds an actual signal with an actual frequency, amplitude, and hertz. So this is the second thing that I was trying to write into the same code. If you wanted to do something like that, you'd basically ignore the first my sig code and so what would you do? You would just say that my sig is equal to noise, so this is the almost two seconds of standard normal noise. Then you would say that for the cluster time interval that you want, you say that my sig is equal to my sig 2, which has the actual signal, and then I would also add noise to that. So in this case, this interval is 501 uh, time points, so I add a increased amplitude signal, which is my sig2, plus a noise 2 that I created, and then my data is just equal to my sig. So you wouldn't add noise a second time. Now, I think that's kind of like a rough idea of what I think they were doing in the ma in the Python code. So when I ran that, it still looks a little weird. Like when you do the wavelet analysis, it looks weird. So that might not be the best way to model it either. So this is the results that I'm getting. It looks okay for the, fi the fast Fourier transform. At around 40 hertz, you see this cluster. Okay, so and this is the so this is the standard noise background and then this is the actual signal that you're modeling. Now, let me show you so these are two ways um, of modeling. I was playing around with this uh, yesterday of like a more realistic way to model um, actual EEG data. So let me show you what I picked as the frequencies. So I have a lot of comments here because I was trying things and then I commented things out. So I set seed uh, or set actually a random stream of uh, numbers uh, here as the lowercase s. That's just if you want to replicate a simulation. Then for frequencies, I randomly sample. Uh, the s is just saying to set seed. I randomly sample uh, 32 frequencies without replacement from 2 to 50. So this is sampling, and I'm still going to work on this, so I guess it's not like final code, but this this is, for example, modeling 32 integers as well. Or was it integers? Yeah, it's integers um, from 2 to 50. So I'm modeling, basically, you sample without replacement 32 frequencies between 2 hertz and 50 hertz as my F. The W states the same. Then I'm saying to randomly sample from a, I believe that's a continuous uniform distribution, um, 32 phases. 
and this goes from 0 to 1 and it can repeat as I wrote here so that's just setting a random number for the phase and that's going to be again multiplied by 2 pi uh, down here and then for amplitudes I say to sample that can repeat from 0 0.01 to 1 so my amplitudes and I might change this later on I, I want to check um, some real baseline data so it's going to be able to the amplitudes are going to be 32 randomly selected amplitudes between 0 0.01 and 1. And that's going to be kind of like my neural activity that is simulated, the background neural activity. And then again, I created a an amplitude of 2 for the second frequency. So this second frequency is going to be whatever is randomly sampled from the F that I wrote. And then I ran that. So let's run this code. Okay, so this looks like it is randomly creating a cluster around 30 hertz. So let's check what F2 is. So F2 is 28 hertz. So you can see a little bit of a cluster. I'll probably play around with this code some more, but I think that this is maybe a more accurate way of modeling um, EEG data. Maybe the, these blue spots are also kind of annoying me, but this I think is an improvement on the code that I could find online. So yeah, that's the idea with this video and thank you guys for watching.